Elvis had a pretty rough starting out as far as acceptance, reputation, and public image. While teenagers of all backgrounds found his music exciting and freeing, their parents protested it profusely, claiming that this music was teaching their children how to be provocative and caused them to lose control of their minds and bodies. There is no room in this city for the vulgar performances of Elvis Presley. It's shocking. I watched him gyrate his legs and swivel his hips. And our parent-teachers group feels he should not be on television. Weaver set up a 20-man committee to do away with the, this vulgar, animalistic, nigger, rock and roll bar. Our committee will check with the restaurant owners and the cafes to see what uh, Presley Records is on their machines and then ask them to do away with it. Let's talk Elvis. I'd like to talk to you a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of the things that happened from, uh, from my side of the story, uh, there's been a lot written and a lot said about what happened to me, but uh, never from my side. Elvis's music was a liberation for young people. Music to really dance to and music to really feel to and music that connected them to rhythms that they hadn't really had that much exposure to before. Now, we know that during Elvis's meteoric rise to fame in the 50s, adults spoke of him like a wicked thief out to steal their children's innocence with his swiveling hips and greased hair as his weapons of choice. But this wasn't the only cause for concern for the older generations. Do you know what song was the most popular when Elvis kind of rose to fame in the 50s? What song was topping the charts? How much is that doggy in the window? That was said song topping the charts. Elvis sang rock and roll, a completely different genre from how much is that doggy in the window? He sang music that stirred up a bee in your soul, music that was raw and unhinged and totally cutting edge for the 1950s. This music, as Elvis constantly reminded his audience, was a toe-tapping concoction of all different styles of music, rhythm and blues and country and jazz, etc. Elvis spoke very openly too about how rock music preceded him in pop culture. And he would very often reference his favorite pioneers and artists in the rock and roll music genre, such as B.B. King and Little Richard and Fats Domino. But this didn't go over well either because now Elvis was praising black artists who sang black music, something looked down upon highly by society during that time period. Elvis is quoted in an interview for Jet Magazine in 1957, very iconic, article. Please read it if you have the chance and you haven't already. A lot of people seem to think that I started this business, but rock and roll was here a long time before I came along. Nobody can sing that kind of music like colored people. Let's face it, I can't sing like Fats Domino can, and I know that. But I always liked that kind of music. I used to go to the colored churches when I was a kid. There's also an interview from 1956 given by Paul Wilder where he asked Elvis what Elvis thinks about um, this article that's written uh, regarding his recent dangers to society. Paul Wilder read some excerpts from the article and they said, when this day is over, an unhealthy hunk of Miami's teenage girls will have unashamedly screamed their lungs out to frank adoration of the biggest freak in modern show business history. In seven stage shows at the Olympia yesterday and today, Elvis is a no talent performer riding the quest crest of a wave of mass hysteria. He had 2,000 idiots per show yelp every time he opens his mouth, plucks a guitar string, or shakes his pelvis like any strip tease babe in town. If what Elvis Presley dishes out is entertainment, then we give up. We're beyond our teens, yet not so ancient, we can't appreciate what might appeal to a youngster. Except in regard to Presley. The scream warm-up routine is reminiscent in staging of another kind of film prior to another kind of performance in another kind of house. I think Elvis's response to these little excerpts read to him during this interview are some of the most iconic that he's ever said, and I want to share them with you. Elvis said, Sir, those kids come here and pay their money to see this show. Come to have a good time. What's his name here? Probably. I might have had a little fun when he was young, but I doubt it. Herb Rowe, whatever his name is. I mean, I'm not running Mr. Rowe down, but I just don't see what he should, why he should call those people idiots. 
because they're somebody's kids. They're somebody's decent kids, probably that was raised in a decent home. And he hadn't got any right to call those kids idiots. If they want to pay their money to come out and jump around and scream and yell, it's their business. They'll grow up someday and grow out of it. But while they're young, let them have their fun. Don't let some old man that's so old he can't get around sit around and call him a bunch of idiots because they're just human beings like he is. So not only was Elvis dancing and gyrating in a way that was really offensive to many members of society back in the 50s, but he was also singing a type of music that was labeled to only be allowed to be listened to by a certain race of people. Elvis spoke so passionately about how he felt that music was music and could be enjoyed by anybody, no matter your age or your race or your background. Being interviewed by High Gardner in July of 1956, Elvis is asked if he thinks his music has any negative influence on young people and is quoted in response saying, I don't see that any type of music would have a bad influence on people when it's only music. Another quote I love um, that Elvis says regarding this topic comes in an interview by Ray Green in 1956. He asks the question, you've probably heard that rock and roll was outlawed just the last week in Northern California City. People have been saying that it's contributing to juvenile delinquency. I'm sure you don't agree with that. And then Elvis says, I don't, I do not agree. Not only because I do it, but because it's untrue. Rock and roll is a music. Why should a music contribute to rock and roll? I mean, contribute to juvenile delinquency. If people are gonna be juvenile delinquents, they're gonna be delinquents even if they hear Mother Goose rhymes. Rock and roll does not contribute to juvenile delinquency at all. The only thing about it is, in some of the auditoriums, the kids get up and start dancing in the aisles and they start squealing and everything and kicking the seats. Now that's the only thing that I know of and that doesn't happen all the time. It just happens in some cases. So Elvis basically here is saying, juvenile delinquents are gonna be juvenile delinquents even if they grow up reading nursery rhymes. It doesn't matter what type of music they listen to. If they grow up in a home or if they already are in a place, a mindset where they act the way that they act, they're gonna do that without the kind of music that they listen to anyways. Elvis broke racial barriers by singing rock and roll music. A white man singing the kind of music that he loved and the kind of music that he knew so well and grew up with, um, living as a really poor young white boy in an all black community. And he elevated black artists who were not being in the spotlight that they deserved by promoting them individually and as a community and exposing an entire generation to their sound. He aided greatly in a major desegregation movement and in my opinion, deserves recognition for that. Many, if not most of the record-breaking black artists from that time have spoken out in utter gratitude for Elvis and all that he had accomplished in his career, especially in the early days, for just those reasons. Two of my favorite quotes come from two of my favorite artists from that time, B.B. Um, King and Little Richard. B.B. King stating, I think once something has been exposed, anyone can add or take from it if they like. He was just so great, so popular, and so hot, and so anything that he played became a hit. To me, they didn't make a mistake when they called him the king. And Little Richard is quoted by saying, by Elvis singing it, in referring to Tutti Frutti, one of Little Richard's most iconic songs, he really made it bigger and made me bigger. He was an integrator. Elvis was a blessing. They wouldn't let black music through. He opened the door for black music. So it's pretty hard to talk about this topic without bringing up Elvis um, and racism or Elvis in the black community in general, Elvis stealing music, Elvis copying other artists of the time. Um, but I digress and I've made a couple of videos before that kind of go um, that direction and I have more to come that'll go into more detail but for today I'm gonna leave this video here. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it then make sure to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and if you like more Elvis content and more of like a daily interactive routine and posting schedule then definitely make sure to go follow me on Instagram at my boy my boy. Uh, we always have a lot of fun over there and like I said I'm really active most of the time over there as well. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this video, so make sure to give me a comment down below, and I'll talk to you guys in my next one. Bye!